Hello and welcome back to OC Avery. As you've seen by the title and thumbnail of this video, we have some very uh, special birds come in. I mentioned this uh, a few weeks ago and in last week's video, so I'm just going to give you a bit of a quick rundown of what we've got. I'm going to show you each bird, we're going to have a good close-up look at them, we're going to talk about the line uh, and how I plan to use them over the next few years. So we have a very special bird that's actually the daughter of the silver medalists from the World Show, which you're going to see in a short while. We have two other birds uh, that are very interesting the same as uh, the world show winner as, as you may have remembered from the other week uh, i said red poles so we do have a silver medalist daughter um in here for the red poles we also have another red pollen uh, that is split for a very very nice mutation and a very rare and expensive mutation uh, and i was very lucky to be able to get this bird and then finally we do have another bird in for the red poles uh, that is a bit of a first in the line bit of something different that we're going to be trying to um sort of establish over the next few years and then on the other side uh, and another note which is not a red pole we do have uh, a bird from a very successful line um, and just came in earlier today. So we're going to take a look at them. We're going to see how they're going to, um, you know, be used in my breeding plans for this year. Uh, yeah, obviously how I plan to use them and how they are going to help improve my line and develop it as I become a champion shower over the next few years. And then after we've looked at these birds, we're going to go on to the weekly update where we're going to see what's been going on in this bird room, the other bird room and the flight, a bit of progress on the birds in the conditioning and for some, the breeding season. <laughs> So the first new bird we've got in is actually the daughter of the silver medalist uh, winning red poles. I don't know if it was in a colour variant class, uh, a cinnamon class, or just the whole lesser red pole class at the World Show in 2020. So this is the daughter from at least one of those birds. I wasn't sure if the birds were actually shown uh, individually or in a stam. Uh, I believe a stam is for uh, of the birds of the same sort of colour look very similar um, so I've got it right here in front of me and you'll be able to see it on the screen um, so this is a cinnamon red pole hen um, absolutely lovely bird some really good markings uh, down the flanks especially um, overall a really good cinnamon colour we've got a nice cap on her as well uh, and a nice beak as well um, you, you know I, I think you know, a good, good uh, standing position. Um, I, I can't be a judge, obviously, of a, a fantastic red pole right now. Uh, I've only been into the red poles for a few years, um, and as it comes for experience, uh, I'm going to need more. But uh, I can, I can obviously tell a, a good quality bird from a lower quality bird, as such. But this is an absolutely fantastic bird right here. Um, I do feel uh, very fortunate to have this um, from a very good friend of mine, um, but not too far away either. So, uh, you know, let's say thank you to him. He knows who he is. Um, and I'm sure that some of you guys who uh, may have been to the World Show in 2020 may have actually seen the parents of this bird and know who I'm talking about. Uh, but I'd just like to say a thank you. They're uh, absolutely brilliant birds. So the plan for her this year she will be pairing to a cinnamon red polecock. Now, what I want to do is by pairing uh, a cinnamon to a cinnamon, we're going to be getting the colour variant cocks and hens. So we're going to be getting cinnamon cocks and we're going to be getting cinnamon hens. And considering because she is the daughter of the silver medalist um, bird or birds, then it, it, it's an important one because I want to try and preserve that. Um, and then once I've got enough to work with, so obviously then I'll have um, her... Uh, offspring and I'll have the obviously the offspring off of the other cock who is from uh, the same line but not as closely related to her and um, then we're going to get both cocks and hens of these these uh, good quality red poles uh, the, the good quality lessers um, in cinnamon so that'll work quite nicely and then what we can do is over um, you know tw probably 2022 season we'll take the youngsters from her and we'll be pairing them into some of the good normals. I've got a, um, a very nice um, normal uh, hen in here. She's two years old, or um, she's two years old this breeding season anyway. 
um, from Jack Lloyd's line. So that will really complement this um, lesser line nicely. Obviously, this is a lesser red pole as well, uh, the normal which I'm talking about. So we'll be taking the offspring from them, um, uh, from that pair. We'll put it to the offspring of these cinnamons. And then what we'll get is the cobbiness, hopefully, from the youngsters of the normals and the, the quality um, of the colour of the cinnamons. And hopefully we'll be able to start to be able to develop a competitive line of these cinnamon red poles. So that's the first bird, um, absolutely lovely, and I hope you really like that too. So on to the next bird. I've got a bit of an interesting one now. Um, split for a, a, a great mutation as well, something that I've been wanting to bring on for the past um, year or so uh, and, and had the opportunity to do so and I'm very, very lucky to do that. So the bird I've got here is a normal red pole, lesser red pole cock. So it doesn't really look too special um, to start with just until you actually find out about this mutation. So it turns out that this bird um, is actually split for FAO. Now if you don't know what FAO is, it's a um, mutation causing the pigment FAO melanin to be expressed in the bird. It's a recessive mutation. So uh, the, the bird has to have two parents that are either split for FAO or one FAO parent and one pa uh, parent split for FAO. So it has to be on both sides. In in order to produce the mutation and he is a, a, a split for FAO so this is a bit of an interesting one and something I'm really really looking forward to working with um, this year so what what realistically is mo I think the highest chance of happening is that we're going to produce um, I'm going to be pairing him to a normal hen who is from the same line now not um, as far as I'm aware not too closely related but a bird that uh, was bred several years about uh, years ago by a breeder who kept a lot of uh, feos and it could potentially be a carrier of the hen as well for feo so my idea is this normal cock bird split for feo and we know he's split for feo will be pairing to a normal hen who could just be a normal or she could be a normal split for feo and what we'll produce there is just normal cocks and normal hens unless it's split for any other mutation and what that will then allow us to do is that I believe it's a 50% a of the youngsters will actually carry FAO themselves. So what I'm really hoping to do is breed some normals from him that are split for FAO. We'll hopefully have a, a good few hens to work with from him which we can then breed into over the next few years. Um, maybe we, we've produced a couple of hens from him this year and then next year we um, we put him to maybe one or two of his daughters, maybe we try and run them as a trio. Bit of an experiment to try there. Um, and hopefully that might give us some visual feos. Um, and, and if not, then I will try and get maybe a, a split feo hen in to put him to. Um, I'm hoping as well that by having a normal split for FAO, the, the FAOs do struggle with um, sight issues because of the red eyes, um, and I believe they're just not genetically strong. Uh, that, all, that's what I've heard, uh, not from my own experience. I haven't had any FAOs as of yet. Um, and I'm hoping it will give us some healthy uh, young FAO red pulse. We'll just have to see what happens. Um, yeah, so that's, that's the next bird really nice bird anyway a nice normal got some good color good working style of flanks good stature and a good um crest so overall that's a really nice bird and um, again thank you to the the breeder he knows who he is if he's watching um absolutely fantastic bird and let's hope for some fails or some split fails um in the next year or so And then the final red pole we'll be looking at is a normal pied. Now, uh, this is from my good friend and mentor, Stacy Turner. Uh, I believe he imported this bird in from Belgium uh, in the autumn. So before Brexit happened, then now we can no longer do that uh, without a, a hefty fee to pay. Um, so I've got this, this bird here from Stacy. 
absolutely lovely normal pied. Um, I believe it to be a similar situation to um, the other normal pied we have. Uh, you may remember a few weeks back we, we actually brought on a, a couple more red poles uh, and that was one of them. We had a, a pied a normal red pole, he had a white fly and a couple of white um, uh, tail feathers. Now this is a bit of an interesting one with him. He's got the, the pied crest as you can see. Um, just something uh, exciting to work with again. Um, it, it could be from a new line of pied, uh, that could be a dominant, that could be a recessive and that could be a sex link pied so we're going to have to find out um, in this next year or so. Obviously it's a cock bird so if it was a sex linked um, we'd be getting hens from him, pied hens. If it was dominant we'd be getting pied cocks and hens, if it was recessive then we'd only be getting pied carriers or visual normals. But, um, working out uh, actually the pairing for him, I believe I'm going to put him because he's quite a good, um, it is definitely a yellow red pole, um, a, a, a yellow feathered bird compared to a buff. Uh, the plan is he's going to be going to one of my um, nice buff cobalt hens. Um, that'll give us obviously normals and cobalts there and then it might give us the option to get some cobalt pines which are quite an interesting looking bird. Uh, but that's really what he's going to be doing. He's got some good markings down the flanks, uh, better than the previous red pole, better than um, the, the, the normal split feo, better colour as well, a rich nutty brown out of this one. Um, so he, he's definitely going to be a team player over the next few years um, and, and something to build my lines from. Uh, It'll probably end up where we get some of his youngsters, we pair them with the youngsters um, from the other pied um, producing cockbird. That's actually going with the the, um, the the Jack Lloyd normal hen. So then we'll be getting some, hopefully, should be getting some nice, decent quality uh, normals out of them anyway. Uh, decent quality red poles for sure. And then maybe even some pieds. We'll have to work out how this one carries. Um, I, I can't make a comment on whether it, if it is just the normal line of the recessive pines we have uh, already established or whether it is actually a, a, a sort of a new line of sex linked or dominant or whatever so that'll be good but hopefully it'll give me a good competitive line of normals to work with as well so i think what we're going to be looking at over the development over of my line over the next few years is hopefully a competitive line of normals a competitive line of uh, cobalts maybe um, and a competitive line of the cinnamons ideally what I don't want to be doing is pairing cinnamon to anything other than a normal sorry cobalt to anything other than a normal the reason being is because I don't want to end up with cinnamon cobalts or agate cobalts or Isabel cobalts because then you end up with birds that don't really do that well on the show bench they're not the right colour for the, the, the cinnamon, the, the silver or the Isabel anyway. Um, and I, what I don't want to do is, is, is ruin a good line of birds. So I'll be trying to keep my cinnamons and my cobalt separate for sure. Um, I, I probably won't be doing anything obviously with Isabel's in terms of a competitive line. We'll have to see. Hopefully we might get some decent ones out. We'll have to see. Uh, and same for the A-Gates. But we'll, you know, we'll just have to see what comes out. Uh, and hopefully we get some good results. Um, absolutely lovely cockbird as well. So we'll be using him this year and, and fingers crossed all goes well. of my new birds, uh, a bird which I think I'm going to very quickly um, take favour to is going to become one of my absolute favourite birds, it's a bird I've got right here. Now this is um, a bird I've got from Mark Pointing, so if you don't know, um, Mark Pointing breeds green finches, very good quality green finches, um, in his uh, partnership with Shane Evans of Direct Bird Products, so uh, Evans and Pointing absolutely fantastic this green finch um, which Mark has very kindly gifted to me uh, and it's very much appreciated so thank you very much Mark um, I, yeah th this is an absolutely outstanding green finch uh, and something I'm really looking forward to working with over the next uh, few years at least I believe it's a few years old uh, this green finch cock I am um, uh, yeah I, um, really really excited to have this bird a bit lost for words um he, he, he's, he's massive um 
it, it com yeah, a, a real st size difference um, compared to the, the uh, wild green finches especially and compared to a couple of the other green finches I've got uh, which I'll show you a comparison shortly um, really cobby bird really good feather um, as, as for is, is this a yellow or is this a buff or is it an intermediate um, I'm probably going to be going a buff bird on this one uh, but then again I'm no expert so uh, it'd be better and make more sense for some of the more experienced uh, greenfinch men to um, take a judgment on that. But he fills that number three show cage um, so well. Uh, I, I think he's an absolutely amazing bird. So huge thank you to Mark uh, for him. Um, the plan for him then this year. He will be going to uh, my best normal greenfinch hen. Um, I've got a hen lined up for him. I am, I think, who will be will be best suited uh, a yellow bird uh, as well. Uh, got some good shape and good size to it from um, Paul Meat's line, which I bred uh, this year. It seemed to be the be uh, one I got direct from Paul, or one I bred from the pair I got from Paul. But um, either way, I'm hoping that will produce some really nice. Um, good quality show standard green finches and then what we can do is with those youngsters we can keep some and just do normal to normal pairings uh, to hopefully improve and get a competitive line of these exhibition green finches going as well as actually breeding them into my pides so I can get a, a competitive stud of pied green finches uh, going as well. As you know I've got a few pied cockbirds in um, who will be pairing to some of the good quality green finch hens uh, better quality than themselves the the, the cockbirds themselves and then obviously he will be going uh, to my best normal hen who hopefully will be producing me some very nice youngsters um in this next year or so um you know I, i'm hoping i think he's three years old this bird so hopefully we can maybe get we we'll definitely get this year out of him um hopefully next year maybe even the year after so we get plenty of young from him and uh, can, can, can work that quite well, hopefully. Um, I, I, I see that going really well. I mean, I, I absolutely love this bird. And I think that it's going to be, um, yeah, it, it's definitely going to be one of the foundations of my Greenfinch line. So really looking forward to that. And a big thank you to Mark uh, for him. So now I've showed you the new birds and I really hope you do like them. I'm very pleased with them. I'm really hoping that we have a good year with them this year and we can really start to develop the lines of both the red poles and the green finches with that new cock bird. So with that being said, it is now time for the first weekly update. So nearly a week on after pairing up the feeder canaries, I'm now going to introduce the nests. So to start with, I'm going to clean out the bottom of the cages, get the pairs into some show cages just whilst I do that, remove all of the newspaper and on top of that newspaper, put some easy bed. This will last longer when the birds are actually rearing their chicks because it means that I don't have to clean them out as often and any uh, moisture, poo, etc, all the mess which comes with breeding birds is soaked up by the wood and then I can just remove that, the little wood um, chips and then replace it and replenish it and, and not as often as well. So that'll mean that I don't have to disturb the pairs as much. So like I said um, in last week's video, I'm going to be giving the uh, two new colour pairs, external um, plastic external nests, and for the uh, feeder pairs, I'm obviously the red palm mule cross with the canary. Uh, I'm going to be giving those the the hook on nests, which actually hook onto the uh, cage front. 
So then fast forward a few days later since actually introducing the nest pans, we already have a nest being built by the pair of yellow mosaics down here. So the nest has been being constructed for about four days now. Um, I'm not um, completely sure. I, I've never really bred. Yeah, I've never bred yellow mosaics before. Um, I never really thought on bred new colours. Um, I, you know, I don't have as much experience with the canaries. I've bred more natives than canaries, mainly just because I prefer and enjoy uh, keeping the natives more. But nevertheless, I do love canaries. And I do really like them. Um, so. We've got a nest being built, so I've been given her cocoa fibre, I've been given uh, dog hair, I've been given a, um, a, a quicko egg, um, sorry, a quicko nest uh, thing from Direct Bird Products, uh, a Cecil and a um, sort of a, another fine uh, naturally produced fibre. So they've spent the past three or four days actually just building that nest i introduced the nest actually on the monday uh, it's now when i'm filming this thursday so they started building almost straight away um hopefully you'll see in next week's week update maybe some eggs uh, we'll have to see but either way it's looking promising and i'm really hoping we do get some young from this pair very shortly for the progress of the rest of the birds, we've got all the red poles now, all the cock birds are squealing, uh, they're fit, they're active, all the hens are happy, everything's getting a bath pretty much every two days, so they're all really starting to develop and come into condition now. Birds outside, all the green finch cocks singing, we've got the Norwich starting to warble, we have the co two crossbill pairs, um, they're getting there now. We've started to see some building action by the, um, the, the, the better pair, the exhibition pair. Uh, so I'm really hoping over the next week or so we might really start to see that kick off and uh, a new development. And then finally, for a bit of something exciting, the crossbow uh, greenfinch hybrid. So we've got the greenfinch cock who is split for agate and potentially pied, just a dark pied, who is paired to a common crossbill hen. They have started building. So the hen has been spent pretty much the past week actually building the nest. I introduced the nest liners uh, just over a week ago now. I noticed that I w when I was actually near uh, the birds, sort them out, I kept seeing the greenfinch cock actually treading the hen, uh, which was a really positive sign to say it was just coming into March. So that's a really good sign, and I'm really hoping we do get something out of that. Um, the green finch cock probably treads a three or four times a day from what I've seen. Um, the, yeah, obviously, I'm probably going to miss them because I'm not outside all the time watching them. Um, she's constructed a nest. It's pretty much ready. So any day now, we could be getting a, a first egg from that crossbill hen and potentially our first hybrid, especially being a greenfinch crossbill hybrid. So we'll have to see what happens there. Fingers crossed, and hopefully you might see something exciting in next week's video from that. So that does bring us to the end of this week's video. So I really hope you've enjoyed it and you've found something useful uh, and you've just been entertained by what you've seen. And I hope you like the new birds we've got in as well. I'm really looking forward to having this, uh, the daughter of the silver medalist, Cinnamon uh, Redpole. We've got the uh, normal split feo, we've got the uh, normal pied, and then we have the fantastic green finch from Mark Pointing, uh, from the Evans and Pointing line of green finches. So really looking forward to keeping them um, and having them on board over the next few years i'm really hoping as well that we do produce some really nice youngsters from them so fingers crossed so if you have enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more hit the subscribe button so you get to follow along with all my weekly content hit the like if you have enjoyed this video and share this video with someone else who you would think would like these videos find them useful and find them entertaining and then finally get your notification bell on if you haven't already so you're notified every single time i upload a new video if there is anything else you would like to see on this channel perhaps there's something in particular you'd like to see more of leave that in the comments so thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next one